Hello again. What have I been doing since I got back into town? Let's take a look. I have to say, it's nice being back in Cuenca, especially since the weather's been pretty nice. Well, we got some rain here or there. I mean, you always get rain. Uh, we've had some particularly nice sunny days, and I love that. Um, <clears throat> I wish there was more of it, but hey, it is what it is. It's also nice to see the rivers full and flowing because I've been here when you could walk across and not get your feet wet. So. Um, we take what we can get, right? So I've just got a few things I want to put up on this video. Um, but first I want to point out something. I, I need to stay away from social media, in particular Facebook, because sometimes it just kind of makes me crazy. Somebody will post up a question, um, you know, they're thinking about coming here, and then you get a bunch of responses that are either self-serving, trying to sell something, or rent an apartment they have, or you get all these Ecuador can do no wrong and they and they throw out things that are just bogus like uh, you know is is Cuenca safe oh Cuenca is the safest place on earth and, and you know it's just it, it's just crazy there's no such thing as a statement like that uh, is it relatively safe as compared to other cities yeah but is there a good chance you're gonna run into some sort of crime it, yeah I mean it's a city and what city on this planet doesn't have its share of petty thieves or house break-ins? You have knifings, you have shootings. Percentage-wise, that's low. But to tell people that you're going to be perfectly safe is just bizarre. Instead, it would be better if they post something useful like how to be safe. Because you can be very safe here if you just follow a few basic rules. So there's that, and then um, and then you have my biggest pet peeve, and that's comparison. No matter what somebody asks, you always have these few people that have to compare to the USA. Now, keep in mind that there's not many things that are really directly comparable. It's a different country. It's a different culture. They're different people. They have a different history. They have different laws. They have a different legal system. So direct comparisons are really, really tough to make. Be it the economy, where you have a lot of socialist programs here that causes an inordinate amount of taxes. Uh, so it's difficult to compare in those areas because you also have socialist programs in the U.S., but they're, they're different. So to compare one to the other, it's pretty tough to do. Um, you have a country that can print all the money it wants, and you have another country that can't. Uh, so those comparisons are just ludicrous. And I just had one uh, today that... Ecuador is the most welcoming country on this earth, and it's far more welcoming than the USA. So we've got to get in that comparison. Well, first of all, what does welcoming mean? I mean, that's an emotional term. And the USA welcomes well over a million people every year legally. And as a matter of fact, right or wrong, with no matter how you feel about it, they welcome a ton of illegal people with social programs and welfare and food stamps and schools and hospitals. They get medical benefits that actually citizens don't even get. So, I mean, how welcoming is that? And does Ecuador have that? No. If people come here illegally, they're illegal and they're not eligible for those things. So. This term welcoming and this comparison constantly to the United States doesn't make sense. Now, welcoming to Ecuador. The government offices, when you're dealing with things to come here and have residency or citizenship, it's kind of a nightmare. 
because everything constantly changes. If we're going to compare in the United States, you have a list of things that you need. And when you begin, you have that list. And when you end, it's the same list. Here, it constantly changes. So you send off, you get a bunch of documentation, it comes back, you go back to the office a month later and they say, oh, by the way, we now need two more documents. And you go back and it took me six months to get my residency that should have taken three or four weeks. And in the end, I provided all, of the, doc all the documentation that I came with. But in the meantime, they kept requesting other documentation and then when I would get it, and pay $500 for this one and $500 for that one. In the end, they didn't take it because they didn't need it. And the fact that they wasted $500 here, $500 there, it doesn't matter. They, it doesn't matter. How welcoming is that? Now, are the people welcoming? People are very accepting. People are very nice. People are very welcoming to outsiders. So, but that's not what they were referring to. They were referring to the process of visa and how Ecuador is the easiest on earth, which is bogus, right next door, Colombia, far easier. My friend Tom, who was featured in one of these videos, moved from Ecuador after a number of years to Colombia. He now lives happily there. And it took him two or three weeks to get all his process done. That's almost impossible here. And it cost him far less than it cost here. So, you know, these posts where people put up these subjective, emotional statements that have no basis, they're totally untrue, but these are supposed to be helping people that have legitimate questions that are coming here. It just kind of makes me crazy and it reminds me of so many of the videos that people do about Ecuador. All they want to do is paint this rosy picture and it's, I, there's no place that can live up to the standard that they're posting. You know, and uh, so having said that, I'm here, I'm in Cuenca, I'm having a good time, my life is good here. Uh, I enjoy almost every single day. I love to get out and walk around. Uh, usually get a little rain on me, but that's okay. I take my jacket and I've got an umbrella and it's very nice. And one of the things that I enjoy here, as simple as it may be, is a barbecue. And so this last Sunday, I decided that I would have a little barbecue. So I went to Super Maxi and I bought their black label beef short ribs, uh, their black label uh, pork rib, which is like pork chops with the bone in, uh, not ribs like Costilla's ribs, and a big old chicken I cut up into pieces and then barbecued it to put it on the charcoal grill. And it looked delicious, it smelled delicious, and had some a uh, couple friends and the people that are living in my house, and we had a good old time. Uh, yeah, slight downside, these are the compromises. The corn looks delicious, and I love corn coming from upstate New York. I mean, it's corn country. This is what we actually call cow corn. I mean, it's kind of tough, and it's, but it's all that's available. It's the best you can get, and I was happy to have it smothered in butter and it was good and I was happy to have it. It's, you have to put away the thoughts of, oh my God, I miss the yellow and white salt and pepper corn. It's so sweet and juicy. You gotta put that away and be happy with what you have. And I'm happy with it. And I ate all in all probably five years of that corn over the course of two days. The beef short ribs, was really stupid of me to to try to put on a grill because they really need low and slow cooking. And then um, after, and so nobody could really kind of get through them even though it was the black label, the best stuff. I mean, you can't expect that of any. And so I, after 
after the dinner and nobody's really able to eat them, I put them in the oven and cooked them low and slow and oh my God, the house was smelling good. And then I forgot about them. And by the time I pulled them out, they're like little charcoal briquettes on a bone. Ah, you know, so it goes. But the barbecue was great. We had a good time. There was more than enough food. The food lasted for a couple days, actually. I tend to get carried away. So, you know, that's just a day in the life. And the life is good. And yesterday, I decided to go back to Sabatino's. I hadn't been there uh, since I did that hamburger review, which was the only time I was ever there. And I decided to go back. Now, when I did that review, it was very good. It was a little on the dry side, but it wasn't enough to mention. Uh, but I really like the place, the owner. He's, he's really a, a, a nice guy. He's fun to be around. So I said, let's go back. So I take my friend Erica, and I said, let's go. And she said, okay. So we go, and we sit down, and we have lunch. And so I've got some clips here. I was very surprised to see he's built on this big extension where he had one bathroom, there's two now, the inside uh, area is doubled in size, uh, his bar area is bigger, his kitchen, he's separated it from where they wash dishes, kind of like US standards. Um, the outside, he put on a cement patio area. Personally, I kind of like you know being on the grass, but I have to say, I'll bet he had complaints because on the grass, every once in a while, the chair might go this way or that way because it's just, it's grass, right? So it's all new patio and very nice. So I um, sat down and I ordered up a hamburger. I hadn't, I hadn't had a hamburger in two, three weeks probably. So I ordered up a hamburger and um, Erica ordered, I don't know what, it, what the heck it was. It was uh, some kind of chicken and onions and peppers and there was a lot of cheese on it. And she loved it. She thought it was awesome. Uh, she ate way too much. Uh, I said, why didn't you just take it home? She just didn't want to stop eating. Uh, too many french fries. There's, there certainly is value. It's a bargain for the amount of food you get. Uh, my hamburger was $5.50. My beer was $2.50. She had a lemonade, two fifty, and her her lunch was seven or seven fifty, something like that. Um, <clears throat> while we were there, when we first arrived, there was only one table. Um, but while we were there and eating, people just kept coming and coming and coming. The dining room was just about full. The outside was full. Um, it was uh, surprising because generally it's a night crowd there. Uh, my hamburger was overcooked. It was it was dry. Um, it was it was tasty, but it was really kind of dry. Uh, that was a little disappointing. But uh, overall, I mean, I enjoyed the place, and I, you know, I I would go back. It's not like oh, it was terrible. Um, so. That's my update on what I've done this week. Uh, of course, there's been a lot more, but um, I'm having a bit of an issue with an adapter for a camera, and that's why you're not getting sound in a lot of these. Uh, trying to solve it today, tomorrow, it's an adapter that's it's like pulling teeth trying to locate here. Um, I may have to send to the US for, for, uh, for this item. I just hate to pay $80 for something that should be $5. So I'm trying to locate it here. And as soon as I get that, I'll be able to do videos as I'm going instead of uh, the way I'm having to do them right now. But having said all that, um, my next video will be a bunch of clips of various things that I did in Colombia when I was there a week or so ago. Uh, that I just want to throw away. I think they're interesting. So some of it may not be interesting for you, other things you'll like, so you know, go ahead and watch it. And then after that, uh, the one uh, I've got coming up that I think everyone should watch is about taxes in Ecuador. And the idea of the tax is 
the lowest in South America. And I want to address that. So, that's it for now. See you soon. You know you're cool.